with somebody to love Did they tell you there were plenty Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the 2023 Wilbur Smith Adventure Writing Prize Award Ceremony. Um, <laughs> we are absolutely thrilled to be back in person for the first time since 2019. And after navigating the choppy waters of virtual celebrations, it's an absolute honor to welcome you all here to this magnificent building, the Royal Geographical Society. Uh, my name is Georgina Brown, and I manage the Wilbur and Niso Smith Foundation, where we run the Wilbur Smith Adventure Writing Prize, the reason that we're all here tonight. So for old friends and new, the RGS has dealt with geographers since its founding in the 1830s. We might be celebrating explorers and adventurers of the fictional kind tonight, but we like to involve those living it on a daily basis to help us with their expertise. A little more on that later. But enshrined within these walls are the famous names and expeditions of the likes of Darwin and Livingstone. And Livingstone spent much of his life discovering the wonders of Africa. In his diaries, he described the beauty of when he first saw Victoria Falls and declared, scenes so lovely must have been gazed upon by angels in their flight. Much of Wilbur's life and work was also spent treasuring and respecting the beauty of Africa. So information, maps, and knowledge gathered on these expeditions was always sent back to the RGS and now make up its unique collections. And we're delighted to count adventure fiction and all of you, readers and writers, as part of that story. Welcome also to those watching from afar tonight via the live stream. I know we have guests tuning in from the US, China, Ghana, South Africa, and elsewhere in the UK, to name just a few. It's wonderful to be able to keep the best parts of the last few digital celebrations and have you joining us live. So please do get involved in the conversation online using hashtag adventure writing. And that's for anyone in the room too who might like to. You'll find us on all the usual platforms. Now, none of us are strangers to change after the last three years. And I must take a moment to acknowledge Wilbur Smith. So that's here at our very first award ceremony in 2016 um, with the first winner, author Corbin Addison. So when Wilbur passed away in 2021, our world changed. To me, Wilbur was always the epitome of charm. I first met him at a book launch in the beautiful Daunt's bookshop in Marlebone in 2016 and knew that working with him and his wife, Niso, would be something special. I heard whispers in public of, that's Wilbur Smith. And adore that, although I'm many novels in, friends of mine and strangers are still getting to read Wilbur's books for the first time, and then realize that there's a whole library's worth of them to enjoy. For us at the Foundation, his books are one of the most precious parts of Wilbur's legacy. In fact, he once said, all my characters have got a big slice of me in them, a big piece of me because it's my dialogue and this is the way I think and talk. He lives on through his words and his work, and he will cont continue to do so. And in fact, one of his characters, or in this vein, perhaps Wilbur, said in When the Lion Feeds that one story deserves another. And that sums up fairly neatly how his ideas and the work of Wilbur and Niso are growing that legacy outside the universes of his books and are supporting writers and readers through the foundation and the prize. So one story deserves another. Every reader deserves another story, and every writer deserves the chance to write it. As a literature and literacy charity, we know that stories are powerful. I'd like to tell you just a little bit more about the work that we do with readers and writers of all ages, but before I do, it is important to say that what we do, including the prize, wouldn't be possible without the ongoing support and leadership of our founder, Niso Smith. Nisa, would you come up and say hello? Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Am I? Can you hear me? Right. At the uh, original script, didn't have. My, I I wasn't here. I'm not supposed to talk now. But I asked Georgina, please let me just welcome everyone. So thank you for permitting me. So I'm um, thanking everyone to come here tonight, uh, despite the weather. And so, needless to say, that I'm a bit nervous because of you know, stage was always wilbur's. I'm always behind the stage. So. And I remember, as Georgina just mentioned, seven years ago we had a live, um, my live uh, event here. So Wilbur was, uh, he supported me whole, through the whole event. He opened the event and he closed the event. And uh, we had a private conversation um, before that. He said that I will support you. But if you are going to continue with this um, establishment, just give your uh, give a word to yourself that you will do that. You will actually work, it's that your work comes from your heart and mind. So you will not do the slipshod work. So this was his, uh, um, his um, advice. And here we go now, seven years later, we are back in the same auditorium, which much more uh, statistic of how much we have achieved will come later on. And I just would like to thank everyone here tonight, and particularly people who came from Australia, Mr. Mark Smith, who came here first time seven years ago. He wasn't even Wilbur's publisher yet, but I think he came just to check can he invest on Wilbur or not. So, and, so, and uh, last year, winner who flew from Singapore. So thank you. Let's ask, I'm just going to hand over to Georgina now and enjoy the evening and congratulate the new genius people we found. Brains. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Of course. So, a little bit more about the foundation's work. Reading is magical. It reduces loneliness, improves mental health, develops empathy, ignites imagination. And we know a good book read at the right time has the power to change a life. On the 9th of January this year, Wilbur's 90th birthday, we launched our online creative writing school with author-led classes for writers or anyone who is interested in the craft of writing. These do have audio if you decide to participate in one of the classes. Um, <laughs> So we provided free to attend author talks and have a set of one-to-one -one author and agent workshops planned. And when our activity does ask a small fee, there are always bursaries available. To date, the prize has supported 46 unpublished writers, a number of whom are no longer unpublished. It's enabled writers to travel for research, including to Japan, Ireland, Spain, and in Australia, something which we'll be doing more of next year. So writers, keep your eyes peeled. We've encouraged almost 3,000 young scholars from around the world to write their own adventure stories. And we've read all of them with the help of our fantastic volunteers, some of whom are here this evening. So a very big thank you to all of you. One of the highlights of the last year has been working with the five unpublished writers selected for last year's New Voices Award, supporting them to complete their spectacular debut novels. And I can't give you an exact number, but I can give you a good estimate of how many readers have read the, write, uh, read the work of the writers of all ages that we've supported. Would you like to take a guess? We know that it's over a million. And that's tremendous applause. <laughs> Thank you. I think that round of applause should also go to the librarians and volunteers who advocate for adventure fi fiction and for the partner charities that we work with. Um, so thank you also to you. Now, after the pandemic, with the educational disruptions seen across the UK and the world, the importance of reading has never been higher. Reading for pleasure is one of the most essential activities for a child's cognitive development. But still today, not every child in the UK owns a book, and more than half of children say they don't enjoy reading in their free time. So in the past 12 months, the foundation's donated over 1,000 physical books, with more than 95% of recipients young readers from disadvantaged backgrounds. And this autumn and winter, we'll be working with Steve Cole, co-author of the Wilbur Smith Prey Zone series, 
in schools and through online events to get more young people reading. Prey Zone is fast-paced, it's action-packed, suspenseful, and it has been described as Jurassic Park vibes with some political drama. It won't surprise you to know that more than nine out of 10 children in the UK play online games. So with this in mind, the Prey Zone series will appeal in particular to children who are engaged online. I've got a short video to show you. just a little taste um, of part of the literacy campaign, and I hope you'll see that on your social media feeds very soon. So now you'll see on the screen behind me, and I promise this is quick, there is a chance for some of you to support our charitable cause if you wish to do so. We are running an online auction with some interesting lots from a four-course dinner for two at Mossimans, London's most prestigious private dining club, to your very own personalized Paw Patrol adventure a visit to a school or college of your choice from Dwayne Fields, who is one of today's most exciting explorers and broadcasters, or a collection of all of Wilbur's standalone titles, including a very generously donated signed copy of his autobiography. So you can take a quick snap of the QR code behind me, or you can look it up online later. Every single penny raised will go to the Foundation's charitable projects. So without further ado, Back to the prize. It's time to reveal the winners of all three prize categories, and we're going to start with our Young Writers Prize, the Author of Tomorrow. So the Author of Tomorrow Award's objective is to inspire and educate. I'd like to welcome Isan Sim, who wrote Climbing Cold, which was shortlisted last year, and this year he joined our panel of young judges. His passion for writing is so strong that he's flown all the way from Singapore to join us in person tonight. Isan, would you come up to the stage? Thank you. Thanks, Georgina. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. The author of Tomorrow, as Georgina mentioned, it's a short story competition aimed to inspire and educate young adventure writers aged 21 and under. Entrants must write stories between 500 and 5,000 words. I'll be honest, when I entered the competition, the thing that drew me the most to Authors of Tomorrow is that it's completely free of charge. <laughs> As a young writer myself, I know how discouraging it can be to fork out money that you may not necessarily have for a writing competition or any competition for that matter. Which is why I think it's so important that the Foundation has made the Author of Tomorrow competition free to enter. By making it more accessible, this gives young writers from all over the world the invaluable chance to hone their writing skills on an international level. The award works with a team of volunteer readers and reviewers to narrow down the entries to the shortlist of just 10 stories. To put that into perspective, this year, there are 861 stories from 67 different countries. That's over 1.7 million words read. Myself and other writers shortlisted last year were then invited to be the judging panel and read these final 10. We were asked to look at elements such as plot, characterization, and my personal favorite, unput down ability. <laughs> Where do I start? It is absolutely mind-blowing to see the incredible talent on display from ages 11 and under all the way to 21. In fact, I think I've learned a thing or two about writing from them. Some of the stories pulled at my heartstrings, while others had me at the edge of my seat, begging for more when the story ended. I think our young writers have pulled off the theme of adventure superbly well this year. They have a bright future ahead of them and should be incredibly proud of themselves. As we judges were reading, Every writer was receiving an edit on their story, 
a cover for the anthology was being designed with the author of Tomorrow Partners, and the team at World Reader were digitizing the book. You'll be able to find it by downloading their app, Booksmart. Just to end off, to the shortlisted finalists, I'd just like to say that it is an incredible achievement for you to have made it this far, and it is a testament to your writing ability. Frankly, you are all worthy winners in my eyes. Connie, I know, but it's the truth. <laughs> Whatever happens tonight, I want you to promise me one thing. Never stop writing. What we have is a gift, and I hope you all use it to the best of your ability. And as the great Stephen King once said, you can, you should, and if you're brave enough to start, you will. So be brave. Thank you. Thank you, Isan. Um, it's wonderful to have you here, and you are doing brilliantly with the jet lag. Um, coincidentally, when once asked best historical novelist, Stephen King chose Wilbur, saying you can get lost in Wilbur Smith and misplace all of August. <laughs> so you're going to see me hopping up and down quite a little bit tonight, and I'd like to invite Charlotte Maddox, our prize manager, to the stage, um, again with Niso Smith, to start the award proceedings. Thank you, Georgina. It's been a complete joy to work with these young authors over the last couple of months, and it's an honour to be announcing the winners this evening. <clears throat> we'll start with the 11 and under author of tomorrow. Shortlisted for this award are Sally Dean with Fire Escape, Abigail Lee with Friend or Foe, Amber Jinti Wang with Crown of the Crows. Niso, would you like to do the honours? Well, <clears throat> this prize is very, very, it's got a very special um, place in my heart, and in, it was in Wilbur's heart. Most of your parents here, of course, you, well, I'm sure you would be just delighted to see when your little child, from age of seven or eight up to 11, sitting in the corner, and they're just writing something which is, you know, would astonish you, because, you know, they are, at that age, they're so fearless, they can get away with anything, so... And <laughs> so this is, um, I'm very, very delighted to say to you, the winner of this category will be, here we go, Amber Xinti Wang, <laughs> Crown of the Cows. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, also, I'm sure she's watching for Huge congratulations to Amber, who is currently holding her own at a debate competition this evening, so can't be with us. <laughs> <laughs> she has sent us this short video. Hello, my name is Amber C.T. Wang, and let me first of all take this opportunity to congratulate every single shortlisted author present today and to thank the Wilbur and Niso Smith Foundation for this outstanding opportunity. I feel like writing is, in a way, a way to help your reader get away from life. It's like creating a time machine for your readers. What made writing Crown of the Crows so enjoyable and what gave me to ins the inspiration to write it in the first place was the fact of 1066. It has so many perspectives to talk about, to think about. The people who didn't really understand what they were participating in might have been one of the most important historical battles in medieval England. My future plans just to continue write for enjoyment, to continue write and to read time machine-like books. Thank you and congratulations. As well as £100 in prize money, Amber will also receive a book voucher for £150 to give to her school, library or charity of choice. Congratulations also to the other shortlisted authors, Abigail and Sally. We have a certificate and book token for you and of course your stories have also been published with World Reader in, the, in this year's anthology entitled Aliens, Apocalypse and the Afterlife, which is available from today. Please do share it with your friends, families and loved ones. <laughs> oh no, you stay.
congratulations to Amber. Um, so next we have the 12 to 15 category, and shortlisted for this award are Rebecca Brown with Everything Till the End, Netta Sayer with Born to Die, and Luke Zhang with Death and Co. <laughs> it's a good title. Yeah. Um, <laughs> As Isan said, this year we received almost 900 entries from all over the world. Not, was the, not only was the quantity high, the quality was too. And competition was especially fierce. So a huge thank you to all the readers who took part in the selection process. Niso, would you do the honors? Well, I've been, um, so this story was um, chosen by judges as well as a winner. So the winner of the story is, um, the story was um, chosen because of it uh, takes place in an extraordinary uh, setting. So the mind can't understand how the child of the, that age can actually imagine that such a place in this earth. So the winner of this, uh, of this category is going to, how are you going? to Luke Zhang. So, yeah. death and cold. I just have to say that when I read this story, I couldn't imagine that child of that age could understand that what is a life after death, description and so um, details of the our life after death. This is actually makes it. It was interesting. I leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> you can all read it. <laughs> yes. Um, so congratulations to Luke. Um, it was described as impressive, confident, and hilarious. Um, Luke is based in Canada, so understandably, but unfortunately, also can't be with us tonight, but he's sent us a short message too. Hi everyone, I'm Luke from Canada, and I'm so incredibly honored to be here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the people who got me here. My mother and Mr. Morash were instrumental in the writing process, and Rick Reardon has inspired me since childhood. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate everyone who submitted into this contest, because you're all fellow writers, and you all wrote something beautiful. Uh, and as regards to my story, it just popped into my head one day, and so I wrote it down. And in the future, I don't intend to stop writing. Uh, thank you all again, and I hope you have such a wonderful celebration. Thank you. So like Amber, Luke will receive £100 in prize money and a book voucher to give to his school, library or charity of choice. Netta and Rebecca, both of your stories were such strong contenders. And please, please keep writing. You will both receive a certificate and a book token, and I can tell you that as of this morning, over 200 people have already started to read the anthology. So Charlotte. <laughs> so next is the 16 to 21 award. The four writers in the 16 to 21 category blew us away with their imagination and skill. They are Ahana Kanchan with The Panacea, Tiana Maidens with Cold Moon, Justin Schwab with Bear Country, and Sarah Thompson with Down by the Riverside. So, Niso. Right, here we go. <laughs> this is very exciting. It's a, the winner is going to have win £1,000. So, um, reading the story of this your young, talented uh, uh, generation, so it was like I discovered a new country, and new, which I didn't know about, and I was asking Georgina today, how do I pronounce the Guyana? Right, so, so we traveled from Guyana to the, uh, and we also witnessed that how to, um, to escape, how to run away from the deadly bears. <laughs> we also actually um, learned how to actually, how to, how we, how we will feel if we are hunted by the real dangerous people. And so it was a very, um, we, we actually reread some stories a few times because it was just, just in, indescribably well written. So the winner goes, to Tiana Maiden, yeah. so called <laughs> Cold Moon. Congratulations, Tiana.
Well, you have to tell us this story. Sorry. Yes, you have to. Tell, sorry, you have to tell us how the idea came to your life and to your mind, and also and about the character. Is it someone you know? Or? Do you want me to? Do you want me to talk? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. Um, well, my story was kind of based around like the Ukraine war because, like, you know, it was very prominent current event. So I wrote about you know two soldiers in war, and you know. It's mostly about the fact that in war, so many people die, and it's like reduced to numbers. Yep. So it was sort of about that. You sort of learn about the characters personally, you know. And how do you feel that your story is going to be published? Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful story, and you should feel very proud. Congratulations, Amber. That's Thank, you. Thank you. Congratulations, Tiana, and congratulations again to the other shortlisted authors in that category. Your certificates and book tokens will be winging their way to you imminently. So every year, NISO also selects one additional author to receive a personal commendation and a prize of £200. NISO, right. who have you awarded your commendation to? Well... It's always very difficult to actually just you know, stories come very close, and I don't have a right to judge, but I am allowed to actually choose the one which I liked most. So, <laughs> so for various reasons. So this year it goes to Justin Schwab. So thank you very much. Where's Justin here? Yeah, so, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. so we have another video. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the curse of international work means that our writers are truly global. Um, and Justin is based in the States, but again has sent us a short video. Hi, my name is Justin Schwab. I am thrilled and honored to be receiving this award from the Wilbur and Yusuf Smith Foundation. Um, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say this is one of the craziest things that has ever happened to me. <laughs> what an amazing group to be part of, honestly. I'm, I, I cannot wait to read the other works as they're released. Bear Country was inspired by a dream I had. I was leading, I was in charge of a little girl. I was leading her through a dark cave system and we were being followed by bears for some reason. And I had to make sure that she didn't know that the bears were following us. It was very important. Um, so that's kind of how the story took that um, turn. Um, and as for what I plan to do um, for writing in the future, um, I'm definitely going to continue it into college. I'm considering maybe minoring in it. And even if I don't end up doing something professionally, I know I'm just going to continue writing for myself, for friends. It's just a part of my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> As we've mentioned, you can find all of those 10 stories on World Reader's app, Booksmart, in an anthology called Aliens, Apocalypse, and the Afterlife. For those of you who may not know, one of Wilbur's earliest writing accomplish accomplishments was his school paper, um, for which he wrote a very large majority of the content. He was the same age as some of these writers. So, as Isan said, never stop writing. Before we move on to the New Voices Award, I'd like to introduce another of our special guests for this evening. Monica Jandrisitz is the CEO of a wonderful business the Foundation has recently had the pleasure of working with, Rewrap. Monica might be new to you, but she needs no introduction, as I'd like to let her tell you about Rewrap and the impactful work that they do. Monica, would you come on up? Hello, I am honored to be here and to share, share the story of Rewrap 
a B Corp certified social enterprise creating premium quality organic cotton tote bags and textile products that positively impact women and farmers in South India. You will be gifted one of our tote bags crafted specially for Wilbur in Miso Smith Foundation on your exit tonight. Every product we wrap make is fully traceable right from the planting of our cotton seeds to the end product. Our goods have only the most positive impact on each and every hand that touches them. Sharing a film that will take you all on a journey to our creation unit in Mysore in South India where you'll meet some of the incredible women who craft our product. There are almost 115 people working here. Basically, this unit is to encourage poor ladies to stand by their own. Our intention is to do good products, organic products, which is good for environment. Some of the ladies, they don't be knowing anything. From initial stage, we'll train them. From scratch to final product, we'll teach them how to stitch. One bag under starting bandaga training kurta full bag finish mara ke. Ado namgu elpa gute. We don't waste our bags in our bags. We don't use our bags in our bags. We don't use our bags in our bags. I'm afraid of being a lot of people. 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 अमेल अंसरे नमने ली नम चिकमा बंदरो और मधुल को एकल को नम शिल्पा तंबा चिरका की तरह इंटा ये लोग अदर यूनिट इट्स ऑल लाइक बिजनेस काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग देल जस्ट कम एट आर्स देल वर्क लाइक अ मशीन्स एंड देल गो वील गिव देम फ्रीनेस वी डोंट पुट ट्रैश टारगेट्स ऑन देम लवेन ओक्लोक वील मेक देम ट� Ilmu mana terane note kat teri ilmu no problem ni lah. Semula tu kan maklum sekali mana yang help pada tu. Awak first tu badge mana lebi, warga cuti ala akon do, bogge mana mat kono di. Maklumlah cina work sekali help pas tu. Uto kaste sahab tu andre itu. Il band mele uta ana damgo tu andre agle lah. Il duri tivi na, ena name tak diu na saksi tu. Ia semesta tumbuh nama ke help mana tu. समस्ते रोना याँ जनुं के तर तेरे सकल सर ना वो तेर ले ही तरा इल्ला सर सर कंडीता इका नाने के उन दिन ना कि मुंदे बंदी थी ने आतरे इन्नो प्र महिला मुंदे बंदरे नंग तुम्बा कुशी पढ़ते इन सर या किंतु ना नंग स्थान दली का नंग नंग के नंग मगड़नो अप्ली तड़े अधे तर आउर को ना नम तरने इरत्ते प्रॉब्लम Our own epic journey aims to show that business can be a force for good. Since we filmed this a few short years ago, we have moved from a 5,600 square foot creation space to one of over 22,000 square feet. We now employ almost 250 women and have also supported over 4,000 farmers in their conversion to organic farming. 
Organic farming improves their health, finances, and ultimately offers them greater climate resilience. One of our patrons recently claimed that he could actually feel happiness in our bags. We thank you all for traveling to South India with us tonight, and we thank the Wilbur and Niso Smith Foundation for being a patron of Rewrap and for allowing us time to share our story of positive impact tonight. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Monica. Um, I hope all of you will be able to feel the happiness that's woven into your bag every time you use it. Um, so please don't forget to pick one up on your way home at the end of the night. So now we move on to the next award of the evening. And to tell you a little more about the New Voices Award, I'd like to introduce Vincent Kelleher, who's the Online and Digital Trade Sales Director at Bonnier Books U UK, who are our partners for this category. Vincent. Uh, thank you, Georgina. Hello, everyone. Um, the New Voices Award is for unpublished, unrepresented writers who have an idea for a novel. Bonnier Books UK provides funding and editorial feedback to the New Voices Award because we want to play our part in the Foundation's efforts to empower writers and help new works come to light. To participate, writers submitted their opening three chapters and a plot outline that shares the promise of what's to come. Five individuals are selected and offered regular one-to-one -one mentoring, editorial guidance from a first-class editor to develop their manuscript over the course of nine months from fledgling idea to complete first draft. Once finished, each writer receives feedback from a Bonnier Books editor and guidance in seeking a literary agent. That makes it sound simple. Writing a novel in nine months, not simple. Also not simple, choosing the five. The award received almost 100 entries from all over the world. From those entries, a dedicated panel carefully selected this year's new voices. By new, we mean that we're looking for both a fresh perspective and an untold story. The panel sought the spark of potential, the kind of storytelling that captivates, transports, and takes us on a journey. This year's five all possess that heady mix of promised talent and an original concept. On behalf of Bonnier Books UK, I'd like to say we're delighted to support the New Voices Award. It's nine months of the foundation standing at the bottom of a precipice with writers at the top, perched on the edge of something great, waiting to catch them when they jump, but knowing they can fly. I know each of the writers have the chance tonight to tell you a little about their work, so I will leave that to them. We're looking forward to reading the finished manuscripts of the five winners. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Vincent. Um, and to actually announce the winners of the New Voices Award is Ruth Sorby. And Ruth is one of our valued trustees. Um, her wisdom and knowledge are absolutely instrumental in guiding us forward. Um, Ruth, welcome. Thank you, Georgina. And thank you for inviting me to announce this year's winners. As Vincent has said, the New Voices Award is more than an award. It is an opportunity. The opportunity to learn new skills, develop a fledgling idea into a completed manuscript, and to take first steps into what I hope will be a successful writing career for all those involved. That said, I'm delighted to announce that this year's winners are ABBA, Amisa Asibon with Anansiland, Gabrielle Hugh with Version Ultra, Matthew Montero with The Fedora, a heist novel, Elizabeth Richardson with Life Below, and Danny Singer with Nothing Left to Lose. Congratulations to all five of you. We have short messages from each of the writers who couldn't be here with us tonight, and some lovely trophies for all of you. 
I'm sure you're all ready to hear a little bit more about the original concepts of each of these manuscripts. Firstly, Abba Amisa Asibon with Anansi Land. Hello, my name is Abba Emisa Asibon, and I'm from Accra, Ghana. The title of my novel in progress is Anansi Land. Anansi Land centers on the Pencils, a biracial family whose idyllic American lives are appended when their patriarch decides to run for political office in his native Ghana. Feeling a strong sense of duty to his motherland, Atu Pencil gives up a well-paying job and a comfortable life to pursue his political dreams. The story charts his struggles as a returnee within a system fraught with corruption and frustration. We also get to follow his American wife, Olivia, and her quest to assimilate into Ghanaian high society. Together, they must navigate their newly elevated social status and make some life-altering decisions when Atu gets embroiled in a scandal that threatens their safety. Embarking on this journey of writing one's first novel can be a daunting and sometimes isolating experience. I am honored to have been selected as a New Voices winner and look forward to sitting at the feet of some of the industry's most seasoned minds to bring my book to fruition. And I'm very pleased to say that I believe Abba's uncle, William, is here with us this evening. William, would you like to come and collect Abba's award on her behalf. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So, yes, here we go. Thank you. Well, give our heartfelt congratulations to your niece. And, I, that's so, and we look forward to seeing it published and read it again for and many other readers will be reading. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Next, we have Gabrielle Hugh, who won with her manuscript, Version Ultra. Hello. My name is Gabrielle Hugh. I am a full-time journalist and copy editor from New York City, the title of my book is Virgin Ultra. It is ultimately a satire of the academic process and academic elitism. It is whimsical, it is taboo, it is absurd. There's elements of magic here and there. So, you know, looking forward, I'm most excited to get my hands dirty with the editing process. I love editing. I love getting feedback. I love workshopping. I'm just excited for the whole process. And I'm so grateful, I'm so humble. I can't wait to get started. Thank you so much. And now, Matt Montero, who won with his manuscript, The Fedora, a heist novel. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Montero. I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight. I live in the United States in the northern state of Minnesota with my wife and my two kids, so I can't be with you in person, but at least I can be with you electronically. Um, I want to say I'm really excited about the New Voices Award, and I'm excited to see where things go. I'll tell you a bit about the book that I'm working on. It's called The Fedora. Uh, it is a heist novel, and it's about an unlikely hero named Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm is a high school science teacher who finds himself suddenly entangled in a really unusual heist and he has to use all of his wits and all of his cunning in order to untangle himself and get his life back. So uh, if you're like me and you like movies, think about the movie Ocean's Eleven and think about the movie Dead Poets Society. It's kind of a mashup of those two concepts. Um, again, I want to say I'm really excited for this opportunity. I'm really looking forward to just trying to become a better writer and to soaking up all the advice and suggestions I get from the foundation. Um, I also wanna say I'm hoping I can take this, this novel, this idea that I have, which I think is a good one, and bring it all the way forward to a finished and final polished novel that will be ready to share with anyone who likes a good heist. So thanks again and congrats to all the writers who are there tonight. Thank you.
Next, we have Elizabeth Richardson with Life Below, and I'm delighted to say that Liz is with us this evening. So, Liz, please, would you join us on the stage? Congratulations. Thank so, you so I was happy much. for you. So, I can't wait to be, to be published that I can read because I'm not allowed to read what is not published. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, congratulations. Here Thank we go. So, so excited. Thank, Thank you. you. You have to tell us your words about it. Please, okay. all right, not giving away the plot, of course. <laughs> yes, that's going to be a difficult one. How do I do a synopsis without giving away the plot? Um, it came to me in a night, my story did, like one of the younger readers, Luke, I think it was. Um, I watched the BBC drama Time, which is a prison drama, and I was very moved by how emotional it was. And I thought, gosh, what's the worst thing that could be done to me? And that night, my brain wrote the story in a night, and I didn't sleep, and I thought, right... I need to get this down on paper, or at least try. So I began to try and plot it out. Um, my protagonist is called Anna Volkova. She's trying to leave her painful infertility journey behind her um, by leaning into her career in the space industry. And she joins uh, a lunar project to try and um, go and join a team here on the moon. Uh, her story takes a big twist. She ends up on a completely different journey to the one that she thought she would do and has lots of adventures along the way and is supported by lots of very helpful strangers, learns a lot about herself and her mother and her background. Um, yes, so I better not say any more, or I will start <laughs> to ruin the plot. Yes, thank you. I'm incredibly humbled by this award. I've never written any fiction before. Um, I am so grateful of every little bit of editorial advice. I certainly need it. Um, I'm very grateful to my mother for her very good grammar. So that certainly helped me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Last but by no means least is Danny Singer with Nothing Left to Lose. Danny, please would you come on up? Congratulations. Thank you so much. Well, so, and again, you know, I can't wait to be published that I can read it. So, that's here we go. Very nice paperweight for you. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. To write my story. Of course, please, you have to tell us a few stories now. All right? Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, about nine years ago, an idea popped into my head and it just wouldn't let go. Um, I didn't really want to write a novel, but <laughs> it, I just sort of had to. Um, it's inspired by the mysterious disappearance of uh, flight MH370 in March 2014. Uh, and nobody to this day knows what happened to that flight. There are various different theories about conspiracies and the CIA or the Mossad or whoever did whatever it did to it. However, my thinking was, since I'm obsessed with the idea of freedom, whether these people actually wanted to disappear. So this is the story. I won't tell you more than that, so you'll have to read it. So I'm deeply humbled, and I want to thank my family over there who uh, has suffered my absence during the years of trying to write this. So, thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you also to Abba, Gabby and Matt, who I know are joining us virtually this evening. We're looking forward to this very exciting year ahead, which will be full of hard work indeed. I'll pass back to Georgina now. Congratulations to all five of you. 
So we now turn our attention to the final award of the night, the Wilbur Smith Adventure Writing Prize for Best Published Novel, with a prize of £10,000. Every year, we work with an incredible team of librarians and library staff to select the listed titles. Thank you to all of you for your hard work, and an even bigger thank you for selecting such a stupendous shortlist from 20 times as many books. Uh, some of you are here with us this evening. Ian, Tiff, Caroline, Helen, Ryan, and Leslie, I believe. Thank you for joining us. Um, and thank you also to those on the live stream. We really couldn't do it without you. So the six titles that made the shortlist then went on to our judges, who are experts in either the literary or adventure fields. And one of those judges is Felicity Aston, who I would like to invite to the stage. Felicity is an explorer, a student research scientist, and author, and she lives, for the most part, on an Icelandic island where she farms duck down and protects islands, Iceland's only windmill. <laughs> so if anyone understands the meaning of adventure, it's Felicity. Felicity, would you come on up? Well, usually I'm known as the crazy duck lady, but now I'll be known as the crazy windmill lady. So thank you for that. <laughs> so one of the striking things about this year's long list and short list was the broadness of the interpretation of adventure. And this sparked huge debate within the judging panel when we had our deliberation. We had really fantastically interesting conversations and lengthy ones, I'm sure Charles will agree, about what is and is not an adventure. How do you define adventure? And more importantly, what is its wider significance and why does it deserve to be celebrated at all? I'm afraid we didn't come up with any answers. <laughs> so I don't have any pearls of wisdom to share with you. But we did agree that an adventure, we felt, was a journey, either a physical one or a metaphorical one, and that that journey had to include some form of adversity or challenge. And it was also preferable if there was some element of fun to it as well. And we've decided that its importance, the importance of adventure, is the experience itself and what is gained by the individual through that experience. So I'm someone who has chosen to deliberately seek out adventure in my life, and my chosen form of adventure is expeditions, which I guess is quite a sort of traditional interpretation of adventure. But even when my own sort of niche area of expertise, my adventure has been pretty diverse. My first adventure was in science. As a brand new graduate straight out of university, I was posted to an Antarctic research station. And I was posted there for two and a half years. So when I turned up in Antarctica in this tiny cluster of green buildings that was the research center, um, I spent a summer there, then I spent a winter where everybody left apart from a skeleton crew of about 20 people, and then another summer, then a second consecutive winter, and then a third and final summer before I came home. But then that developed into me organizing, taking part in, leading my own expeditions. And most of these were making journeys with, school, with small teams by ski in the polar regions. So this picture, for example, was taken at the South Pole. That silver ball is the handmade monument that marks the very bottom of our planet. And in case you don't recognize me, well, that's me over here in all my polar gear. And standing next to me are six women who've just completed a journey from the coast of Antarctica to the South Pole, a distance of over 900 kilometers in the previous 38 days. But what made this journey really adventurous for me was the fact that of those women standing next to me, the majority of them had never done anything like this before. 
They'd never put on a pair of skis. They'd never spent a night in a tent. For one of the women standing there, having made this journey, she'd never seen snow or experienced sub-zero temperatures before. She'd grown up in a small country in the tropics, so she'd had no reason to experience those things. She'd seen snow in photographs and films, but never experienced that environment for herself. And yet, despite that level of inexperience, we trained together, we gained confidence together for a number of years before successfully completing this expedition and taking this photo at the bottom of the world together. About 10 years later, I did a similar thing, but to the other end of the world, to the North Pole, this time with a team of women from across Europe and the Middle East. And then eventually, these expeditions developed until I decided it was time to see what it was like to make an adventure by myself uh, without the support and the encouragement that I knew I derived from the team around me. And so I set off to make a journey by ski across the Antarctic continent. It was a journey that took me two months, and it was a distance in the end of just over 1,000 miles, 1,744 kilometers to be precise. <laughs> But not all my adventures have been by ski or in the polar regions. I, made a, I was part of an adventure uh, by airship, which is an amazing thing when you turn up in an airfield and they go, right, which one is yours? And you go, that one's mine over there, that blimp in the corner, I'm taking that. And we flew this blimp right the way across the United States from Cape Canaveral and Florida right the way to San Francisco. But I've also had adventures by specialised vehicles back in the polar regions again. These may look like normal 4x4s, but they're anything but. They're highly over-engineered uh, machines that could take us across glaciated territory uh, right the way across the Arctic and the Antarctic. I've made adventures by sea. Uh, this glorious yacht took us all the way to Greenland from Iceland and beyond that. And then I've made adventures in not such wonderful cutting edge craft as well. Uh, this was sort of affectionately named the packing crate by those of us involved. And we used this to float down the Yukon to recreate uh, the path of the gold rush for a BBC TV series. But through my current uh, expedition project is once more based in science, so I've kind of gone full circle. Uh, this time we're making a series of journeys by ski across the Arctic region, collecting snow and ice samples, uh, which will be used to investigate airborne pollution, such as microplastic. So we're used to plastic being in the ocean, marine microplastic, but in recent years, we've come to realize it's also in the air around us that we breathe. So investigating airborne microplastic and also other forms of pollution like black carbon and heavy metals that are deposited across the Arctic. So these have all been very different experiences with different goals and with different challenges involved in them. But common between them all is this thread of adventure. So after all this time, 25 years or more of all these amazing adventures, what does adventure mean to me? Well, through adventure, I've got to know and to learn from people that I would otherwise have never met. And I've also got to know myself in a way that I think would be unlikely if not for adventure. And I've got to see places and have experiences that I could never have imagined beforehand. And I find hard to believe are real now in retrospect when I look back on it. And all of this has given me a new perspective and a new understanding that I will cherish to the end of my days. So I encourage everybody in this room to seek out a little more adventure in your life. Happy, safe adventure, it goes without saying. Or maybe to imagine adventure that you then write into the next stunning novel that we were all celebrating here next year. Because it's through adventure that we grow, and it's through adventure that we achieve stunning, amazing things. So thank you to all of those who wrote the stunning, amazing novels that we're here to celebrate tonight. Thanks.
Thank you so much, Felicity. Um, amazing to hear about some of your incredible adventures. Um, we're going to do a quick judge switcheroo um, as author, judge, and last year's winner, Giles Christian, is now going to head on up here to talk you through the shortlist. Um, we do also have a small gift as a token of thanks um, and congratulations to each shortlisted author. Um, these are maps of the location in which your novels are set, printed by our friends at Stanford's. Um, who are also, coincidentally, our booksellers for this evening. Um, so we won't let you go home without them. Giles, over to you. <laughs> thank you, Georgina. And thank you to each of the shortlisted authors for their incredible books. It made my job as a judge very hard indeed. In fact, we judges spent days arguing it out, wrestling, axe throwing, beer pong, you name it. Well, it's, I wish. No, we, we spent a very long Zoom session, honestly. It went on forever. So, uh, right, in alphabetical order, we have My Name is Yip by Paddy Crew, a compelling tale of friendship, survival, and adventure set against the backdrop of the American Gold Rush era. My Name is Yip follows Yip Tolroy, a young boy who finds himself on a perilous journey through a world of menace and violence. Going Zero by Anthony McCartan. Exploring the chilly possibi chilling possibilities of advanced surveillance technology, Going Zero follows Caitlin Day as she tries to avoid capture in a bid to win $3 million. But for Caitlin, the stakes are far higher than money. Black Butterflies by Priscilla Morris. Set in a war-torn Sarajevo, Sarajevo during the spring of 1992, Black Butterflies follows Zora as she navigates the horrors of the longest siege in modern warfare. As the city disintegrates, Zora must make heartbreaking choices to protect her family and rebuild her life amidst the chaos. The Half-Life of Valeri K by Natasha Pulley. Set in the aftermath of a nuclear disaster, the Half-Life of Valeri K, Valeri K probably, follows Valeri K uh, Volkanov, a former nuclear specialist, as he is transported to a mysterious city with a hidden purpose. There he uncovers secrets that even the enigmatic KGB officer overseeing his work fears to confront. No Country for Girls by Emma Stiles. A gripping and gritty road trip thriller, No Country for Girls follows Charlie and Neo as they are forced into a dangerous alliance after becoming unwilling accomplices in a murder. Their resilience is put to the test as they navigate the unforgiving Australian outback to evade capture. Four Treasures of the Sky by Chenny Tingui Zhang. Four Treasures of the Sky follows Deyu, a young woman who is unwillingly taken on an adventure fraught with danger. This novel delves into themes of identity, resilience, and the pursuit of one's dreams in the face of overwhelming adversity. Georgina, back to you. Thank you, Giles. Um, that's not quite the last you've heard of Giles, because we just have a video from the judges, um, all four of them, just to say a few words about the shortlist together. Hello, I'm Giles Christian. I am hugely honoured again to be a judge for this year's amazing shortlist. My name's Felicity Aston, and I'm a polar explorer and a research scientist. Hi, everyone. My name is Leon McCarran, and I am an author and... I suppose an adventurer in that I've spent much of the last decade and a half going on long and often uncertain expeditions. Hi, I'm Simon Savage and I am a broadcaster and book reviewer. Being a judge on this panel for the Adventure Prize has really changed my opinion about what an adventure is. It's made me realise just how broad that category can be. We can be transported through a good book. 
And this prize is so important because it celebrates adventure writing. It celebrates those novels that take you somewhere. We're recognising that that has real value to us as a species and to our communities and to our societies is, is really important. And this prize is one of the ways of doing that. There's a few things that I think across the board an adventure has to have. It has to have a sense of place, a sense of destination. A sense of journey somewhere in which the protagonist faces great challenge, great jeopardy, and has to dig deep within themselves for courage and resourcefulness that they perhaps didn't know was there. I think it's that total escapist feeling like you're with someone as they try to discover things. You need to have a character who you want to spend time with. You need to have a character who you care about as the reader. There were some real, like, daring to escapes. There were some horrifying adventures. The, the diversity on this list is extraordinary. I know there's something for everybody. The beautiful, evocative, descriptive prose and the characterization were exceptional. It just taught me so much about a place that I knew nothing about. Expectations were constantly being upended and sometimes in really inventive and imaginative ways. It grabbed me as soon as I started reading. It was such a sense of a journey. So strong, really unique. I find myself um, making excuses to go off and get back to the book. I knew where we were. I could smell it. I could taste it. I could feel it. It started off at a breakneck speed and it didn't stop until the very final page. It's really sinister and really scary. It was incredibly lyrical. It was heartbreaking, of course, and tragic, but um, I was really there with the protagonist. I thought it was a wonderful representation of someone going through a almost unfathomably challenging time. Terrifying just because of how realistic it is. It was a real voyage of discovery going through that shortlist and I've been left with this gift of all these incredible characters in my head and uh, you know I just want to know what happens to them now. Overall it was just fantastic to be lost in escapist fantastically written fiction and um, yeah it was a real treat. The writing of all of these books is superb. Just get hold of the shortlist and go through them. Congratulations to the winner when they are announced and just a huge, huge thanks to writing these books that took me off on all sorts of different journeys. I know only one of you can walk away as the winner, but you've all done a fantastic job and it really was my pleasure to read them all. So good luck. I look forward to reading many more works by all of you in the future. Have a wonderful evening um, and I look forward to seeing whatever you write next. So that's six makes you hold your breath adventure novels. And it is an absolute pleasure to have each and every one of you on our shortlist. Niso, the last award of the night. Would you please come on stage? Can you hear me, everyone? Right? Mm -hmm. So, very exciting part of the evening. So I can't add much. Uh, what the judges already said about this, uh, the winner of the next, uh, the winner of the, this year prize. So um, let's open the envelope. So then I think that, right. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, I just have to tell you some very short um, uh, uh, gossip. So Georgina and I were sitting at just, uh, it was four hours before I had to take a flight back to Cape Town and sitting outside of the Stanford uh, bookshop. It was cold, freezing a little bit. And so, and she came late and I said, so <laughs> I, 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 I got some cookies and everything for her just, you know, this, uh, and I just bought so some special Christmas present, but I gave to her on that day, so three months before That's Christmas. Nice. And you. because I just wanted to know the, who is the winner. And she said, no, I can't tell you. I said, look, but have we go? of course we got a winner. So, and um, it was a rather, you know, I just gave her better seat as well. So, no, she wouldn't disclose it. Absolutely. What a how such a loyal person. <laughs> so, so, and I'm very, very excited. So, to, to announce, I find out only a couple of days ago. So excited to say, and I nearly had the tears when I actually jumped 
find out the name because, you know, the, the, it's, uh, the, the story was, uh, the, the level of the friendship in this, uh, in this novel is just indescribably impossible to have. So that's it's what it makes us human, is a friendship. So, and obviously survival, and so all <laughs> other so aspects of life. So, right, the winner is going to Emma Styles, No Country for Girls. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. That was amazing. It was, I had goose pimples when I saw it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, congratulations. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I've forgotten everything I was planning to say, but that's okay. Um, this means the world to me. I am probably going to get quite emotional. Um, <laughs> I'll start with, uh, this is for all the young women and girls out there who are unapologetically and uncompromisingly themselves, whatever the world throws at them. Um, I could thank so many people for helping me make this book, to, for supporting me on this crazy debut author uh, journey, and I can't thank everybody, so please consider yourself thanked if you had anything <laughs> to do with me and this book. But I will say some thanks. Um, yeah, thank you to this incredible foundation. We've heard about the work uh, the Wilbur and Lisa Smith Foundation does and how amazing that is at, in championing this incredible genre that we love, that we are discovering together, uh, and emerging uh, writers. Um, I am pretty well forgetting all the things I was going to say, but that's fine. Um, I wrote this book largely out of my deep wish for reconciliation in Australia. Um, and I can't really accept this award without acknowledging that we had a referendum last weekend and the result did not go to plan. Uh, and there will be millions of people out there reeling from that result. Um, but I wrote this book because I truly believe that human beings, as human beings from whatever background, we can reconcile our differences. More than that, we can uh, forge friendship across uh, whatever difference we may find. And But we can only do that if we are willing to be vulnerable and really listen to one another. Uh, so, I'm going to finish with a quote. I honestly feel like I've forgotten so many things I was going to say, but, but mo mo <laughs> most of it was thanking people. Because I just feel like um, the Foundation have looked after us so well this year. I was, um, I was just amazed to be long-listed, then amazed to be short-listed. And, um, yeah, so... So now I'm remembering some things. So thank you <laughs> to all the early readers uh, and pri the prize readers who did make up the long list and the short lists, and to the judges, and as I said, to the, everyone at the foundation for looking after us so well this year. I have spent most of this year since being, getting shortlisted telling people there's no way I'm going to win this in a million years, but I'm just thrilled to be shortlisted. So I am, I am a bit, I am in, I'm still in a bit of shock about this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to finish with 
two things, two more things. It's been amazing to hear from the young writers and all the writers this evening. That has been so inspirational. But I just want to say, I am a person, a writer, who is able to undermine myself on a daily basis and not have confidence in what I do. So if you are anything like that, I know we've heard these kind of things over and over again tonight, but if you are anything like that, please find a way. I'm, I don't have any answers, but please find a way to keep doing what you're doing, keep writing your stories, because the world needs your stories. Um, and I'm just going to finish with this uh, quote, um, which, as I, as I said, um, I wrote this story out of my... Uh, how deeply I wish for reconciliation in Australia and in the world. Um, and this quote I have had in my... held in my mind for a long time. Um, and it is from a group, or possibly several groups, of First Nations activists in Australia in the 1970s, including a woman called Lilla Watson, and the quote is, if you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. And that really was uh, driving me as I wrote this story. So thank you again so much. Huge congratulations to Emma um, for No Country for Girls. It's such a fantastic novel. Um, I also want to say huge congratulations to all of the other authors um, who have made up that shortlist because your books are absolutely superb. Um, thank you for telling us those unforgettable stories. It's been wonderful to work with all of you and to work on your work. Um, the feedback we've had from readers of your books has been simply stunning. And you don't need us to tell you that these books have a long future ahead. We're sure readers, that will, readers will continue to pick them up for years to come, to read them, to recommend them. I'm just going to do a few thank yous now of our own. Um, of course, to our judges to the librarians and library staff, to our young judges, especially Isan, for speaking so well, and of course to all of you who took the time to volunteer as readers and reviewers for us. Thank you to our partners in prize, Bonnier Books UK, World Reader and The Reading Agency. Thank you to Rewrap for the work that you do and the beautiful bags that you've made for us. Thank you also to our trustees and our trusted advisors, and to everyone who's donated items for our fundraising auction, and to everyone who's made a donation so far. We will be heading back into the map room now for some drinks and some canapes, and we hope that you'll all be able to join us. Um, and there is one final thank you that's due, and that is to Niso Smith for your... <laughs> That's for your ongoing support of writers and readers and for adventure as a genre. Um, we wouldn't have been here without Wilbur, and we certainly wouldn't be here now without you. Um, thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. <laughs> Let's celebrate. <laughs> thank you.